I don't know about you guys, but personally, I love shooting my videos and photos when the sun is out, the light is nice and golden, we might have a sunset in the background, but in the real world, we don't always have that opportunity, and sometimes we find ourselves having to shoot when there's a bunch of clouds in the sky, or maybe it's really overcast. Well, that is what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. I wanna give you guys some tricks and techniques that I've learned over the years that really helped me when I find myself in those situations and having to film in that really overcast light. I would like to just add that a lot of people actually prefer to shoot in this overcast light and will wait for the days and the time of day when the light is really nice and overcast and it can offer a lot of benefits to shooting in this type of light, especially if you guys are shooting in midday or something like that, you would often be having that direct sunlight, which is gonna look really, really bad and contrasty, especially if you're shooting someone's face. And if you have some of this overcast light, it can actually create a really nice, beautiful, soft light across your model's face. If you guys do find yourself shooting in midday in that direct sunlight, I actually did a video on that very recently, and you guys can check it out right over here. Otherwise, let's get into these tips and tricks for shooting when it's overcast. The first thing that I like to make sure I'm doing when shooting in this really overcast weather is that I like to get my model or my subject to wear something bright, a bright color, something like yellow or red, just to make them stand out from that background and make them pop a little bit. That's why you will often notice that a lot of photographers that shoot in these moody type of tones a lot, you will see them with their subjects having those really bright red jackets, and it's because it makes them pop really nicely from that background. Often when it's overcast and misty, everything is kind of gray, there's not too much color and everything can get a bit washed out and by having your subject in these really bright colors it just makes them stand out from that background and draws all of your viewers attention to that model or subject. The next thing I like to make sure I'm doing when I'm shooting in this overcast light is to just slightly underexpose my image. Now this is generally a good idea to do in most lighting situations, but it's particularly important when you have this overcast lighting because your clouds in the background are all gonna generally be highlights and if your camera is slightly overexposing, all of that background data and detail is gonna be blown out and you're gonna lose that in your image. So I like to just get one stop or even half a stop underexposed and later on I can bring my shadows a little bit up in post, make my image a lot more even and making sure that I'm not losing all of that data in those highlights. Something that's actually hugely beneficial about shooting when it's really cloudy in the sky is that you're gonna be getting really soft light onto your face. You have to think of the sky as one giant soft box. And if you guys are familiar with using soft boxes on lighting situations like right now, basically what you are doing is you are taking that small light source and just making it much bigger and spread out so that it isn't as contrasty and it doesn't cast those sharp shadows. So you can see in this, my actual light source is very, very small, but once I have that massive soft box on it, it creates this soft light hitting my face. It creates nice, even exposure across my face. The roll off on my shadow is not too harsh. And the exact same thing is happening when you guys are shooting out in the real world. The sun is acting as your light source, which is generally quite small and will create a lot of contrast and that really hard shadow. But as soon as you have a massive cloud covering that sun, that cloud is doing exactly the same thing as my softbox is. And it's creating really nice soft light that's gonna be hitting your subject or anything that you guys are filming. This is a perfect opportunity for you guys to come in for some awesome portrait shots. Maybe you want some close-up shots of your model's face and this is gonna be really flattering light for them. That even exposure that's gonna be across their face is generally gonna look really, really nice. So keep that in mind. Next time it's all overcast and you guys are like, mm, it's looking so gray and moggy outside. I don't really wanna shoot in that. Head out, give it a try, shoot some portraits and you can end up with some really nice even exposures across your subject's face. At the same time, the next thing that I wanna to speak to you guys about is using a bit of negative fill to create more shadow on your subject's face. The trouble is, is when you have this massive white softbox that is just lighting up your whole area very evenly, 
If that isn't what you're after, it can create a bit of a boring look for your subject and it's not very moody. You can see that if I'm facing straight into my softbox, my exposure is even across my face and there isn't really any like mood to it. Sometimes you might want a shot that has much more of a shadow on one side of your face, creating much more of a moody look. And you can still achieve this when you guys are out and shooting in this overcast weather by using a bit of a negative fill. You could, for example, get them to stand next to a tree, which is gonna be quite dark and it's gonna be negatively filling in that space, just the same way that you might see someone using a big white reflector to light up one of the sides of your subject. You can do the exact same with dark things and it's actually gonna make it darker and take light away from that side. Keep that in mind if you guys are shooting and your subject is just looking too evenly exposed and you don't want that look, this might be a great time to start looking for something to negatively fill in that one side of their face. The next thing that I wanna to talk to you about is making sure that your light source is coming from the right direction. So sometimes when the whole sky is just covered in cloud, it's just mist and gray, you can't really see the sun at all, it might be easy to assume that the light is gonna be even coming from from every single direction, which might sometimes be the case, but a lot of the time you will find that some of the sky is gonna be a lot lighter than the rest of it. By placing the sun in the correct place or the brightest part of that sky is gonna help you achieve the correct image that you guys are after. For example, if you had the brightest part of the sky right behind your model and you were shooting into that, it's gonna be even more tricky to not blow out those highlights in the back Background. So it might be a better idea to have that main light source coming from behind you as the camera person and shining straight onto your model's face and behind them it's going to be a slightly darker tone of cloud making it easier for you guys to get that correct exposure from your model and your background. You might want to switch this around to work to your benefit, but as long as you guys are aware of where the lightest part of this massive giant softbox is coming from so that you guys can use it to your advantage is something that is quite important to be aware of. Once you guys have captured your footage out in this overcast cloudy weather and you are back in your editing suite, there are a few more things that you guys can do to help you get this footage to look the way you want it. And the main things are gonna be just color grading it in the way that you want. Oftentimes when you are out filming in this cloudy weather, your footage ends up having a bit of a blue and a cold look to it. And if that isn't necessarily what you guys are wanting, you can add a bit of warmth back into this by using that white balance slider and you can warm up that image quite a lot. You should definitely not push this too far as it's gonna start looking kind of strange to the viewer and definitely not look real, but this is something that you guys can do if you need to and it can definitely help. That is gonna be it for this one, guys. Remember that there are actually a lot of people that are waiting for this overcast and moody weather to get their desired look, so it's not necessarily a bad thing and you can get some really, really awesome results when you have this really soft lighting coming onto your model's face. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new and found these tricks useful. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next one.